Another week, Hot Takes episode number nine. By the way, if you come to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Karki, you can get the Mauga uh, highlight intro, Mauga spray, and the Sombra skin by watching my stream because of drops. And I have three more Ultimate Battle Pass codes to give away Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So by the time you watch this, come to my stream. It's linked in the description. Anyways, let's start off right away. The chat's contributing to the conversation with a bunch of these little fishies called Joels. And we have our first hot take here that says... <clears throat> I hate forced hero swapping and I play nine supports at a GM level. Is that really a take? Nice. We know you get bitches, bro. Okay, next one. Hot take. Elo hell is real because lower ranks are much more varied in skill levels with smurfs being more active and having a more noticeable effect on the match. Hmm. Okay, there's a little bit to unpack here. I don't actually think this is the hottest take in the world. I think it's a hot take to say Elo Hell is real. I've always believed that if you are skilled enough, like, you can't climb playing in the skill bracket you're in. If you're silver, you play like a silver, you're going to stay in silver. You have to play one level up. Play like a gold while in silver. Over the long term, you will eventually make your way to gold. Might take a little while, but you can get there. Um, but I actually do agree that the lower ranks are much more varied in skills. People in the metal ranks have the most bizarre different set of skills from player to player. There's like these gold players with really great aim, but terrible game sense. And then you have these like gold players that are just super casual are gold and they're like decent at the game, but they don't like follow the game and keep up with like hero swaps or whatever. They just play whatever they feel like and they're just playing with their friends. So I do agree with that. Um, Smurfs being more active. I don't know how often people are smurfing in gold. It might not be like as big of a smurf. Like GMs are not smurfing in gold for very long. If they are, have a fresh account, they are climbing up super fast with the new system. They're out of gold within like three, four games. But I do agree with the the variance. The variance is much higher here with different, you know, with different reasons. People have different experiences with different teammates at these levels, um, which can affect the match, of course. So that's why I encourage people who are in the lower ranks to, to train a skill called adaptability. Less so about the mechanics in the game sense. They all kind of tie in together, but adapting to how your teammates play style is, is I guess, part of the game sense spectrum. But then everybody does have to follow along, but yeah. Okay, that's my take on this one with Elo Hell. Every hero is always really hated by a group of people at all times. For example, Cassie is not very unique hero to play against, but still can be said he is a point and click hero with brain dead abilities. At the end of the day, most of the time, it's just an excuse for a losing player. Based take, not a hot take. This is just a true fact. Every hero has a hate group at all times. Anybody who dies to a certain hero has an excuse for them. I don't know at any point if someone feels like it's a fair fight within a hero. Maybe only Ryan mains, to be fair. In the Ryan v. Ryan matchup, it's a respect thing because they're just actual alpha, like, handshake matchups. Everybody else, if you die to them, you're going to get a hate group. Mercy, cast, brain dead, point and click, widow. Oh, it's just one shots across the map. Hanzo, oh, random headshots across the map. Doomfist, ah, oh, he's just so mobile. He just runs around all the time, does whatever he does that. Whatever he says, or whatever he does... You know what I mean? I do think every hero does have like, you know, unless unless I'm mistaken. I feel like Ryan, well, actually I lied. The Ryan players respected the Ryans, but then there's a lot of people who bitch about the hero is Ryan players themselves because they feel like he needs buffs. That's actually the difference. Next hot take. Make it so Hanzo's DPS passive is actually keeping 25% of the ult charge due to having no reload. That was a DPS passive in the Overwatch 2 beta. It's better than Hanzo having nothing for a passive. I think Hanzo in a vacuum is fine. Even though he doesn't fit with the whole overarching DPS passive of the reload because he doesn't reload, he's not weak as a hero and he doesn't need that passive to be effective. If anything, if they really wanted to, this will actually buff Hanzo and it, stronger than he currently is. The only thing I can think of is like, like as soon as you fire your storm arrows, if you do confirm any kills, maybe your, 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 your storm arrow recharge is, is increased. Because you get a faster reload for two seconds, maybe you get one or two seconds off your next storm arrow. Or for all DPSs, all their cooldowns are reduced by one second or something if you get a kill, but then that actually might cause more imbalances in the game. So they don't want to do like an overarching DPS passive with cooldown reduction. But I don't think they need to retroactively add something for Hanzo just because he doesn't have a DPS passive. I think he's fine the way it is. Hot take. I like the balance philosophy of the devs, and I trust them way more than people give them credit for. 
that's a hot take for a lot of people because a lot of loud voices criticize the devs balance direction a lot of times um i will say i thank god i'm not a balanced i'm not a dev balancer because you can never please anybody at any time like it is impossible there's going to be different no matter what there's never going to be a state of the game where everybody's happy there's going to be someone who complains that their hero is weak or this other hero is super strong some is a bit more egregious egregious than others but i will say i don't think the direction of winston doing damage to armor was necessary i didn't think they needed to change any of the kiriko things this season maybe the ofuda healing like speed of it is good but the heal because you heal 110 right now if you suzu a um a uh, CC effect or a negative effect like Alari's all bleed from Junker Queen um, the burn from Mauga right now um, Suzu used to only heal 50 and now heals f what 80 and now heals 80 because they try to compensate the buff and then it heals 110 if it's a specific event I actually don't think Suzu could have had no healing and it would still be a good ability um, but Kiriko is like weak based on their stats on the lower end so i think the, 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 the i just don't like some of the direction of it but i will say i give them more credit than people than um what is it i give them more credit than people give them credit is that how you say it because there's a lot of factors to consider and there is so many different ranks and people's perception of different things whenever i post the patch uh the the new patch on my main channel the comments have a very specific direction in the YouTube comments, a different audience. They perceive um, the Doomfist thing as a really big buff. The the Kiriko thing being like, that's not enough. Kiriko needs more because she's so weak. And then I post the same video or like a shorter version of the patch on TikTok. And the comments are completely different. They're asking for um, uh, Ryan nerfs or something like that. And I was like, what am I looking at? Because Ryan is dominating the ranks. But then everybody else on YouTube is saying like Ryan's weak, for example. And people on Twitter say Ryan's weak. So there's just, there's so many, so much different push and pull. A lot of people tend to gravitate towards whatever voice sounds loudest to them on the platform they like to read. But I just encourage you guys to like play the hero yourself. And that's where the opinion would work best rather than listening to someone else whose perception of it is could be, could be completely different because they play at a different rank. They play on a different platform. But, um, the balance philosophy, I believe personally, should be top down. Even though the game is a very casual game at its core, I actually do believe you should personally should balance top down where you balance for uh, the high level play because that's the cap of a hero when you push the hero to its its limits. And I think it's okay to have heroes that are only excel when you have a high level of skill at it but are weak um, if you're not skilled. For example, there are people saying like these tracer buffs um are good tracer's so weak they need to give tracer 200 hp or some outrageous take like that but that's because you know they're a bronze player and they're playing a hero that requires a lot of finesse good movement mechanics and great tracking skills and same with sojourn sojourn's very very good at high ranks again after all these changes but sojourn is tr very weak for a lot of players and then same with winston they gave true damage to against armor right now because winston has like a based on the stats has poor performance if the devs just trust that they don't realize in high level meta, Winston is really, really good because they accomplish different things at different ranks. I'm not a, I'm not a game design, a game balancer and thank God I'm not. These are all just my opinions anyway, so yeah. Okay, interesting take here. Zenyatta needs a better rework. Both of his orbs, Harmony and Discord, should be applied to him by default, resulting in him taking more damage and healing himself but then he could place the Harmony Orb like usual, but remove his own healing. But the Discord Orb would be returned after a few seconds and then go on a short cooldown. And that would open a clear moment of opportunity for counterplay, as there are small moments where he is Discorded and takes more damage. The numbers would need to be tweaked, but it would play more into the hero fantasy and make playing against him more engaging. I think the moment of opportunity for counterplay is you can you can base counterplay based on a hero's hitbox and their defensive abilities. And Zen has no movement speed, a dash, a fade, like an ice block and vulnerability uh, thing besides his ultimate, of course, but that's an ultimate ability and everything. I think Zenyatta's fantasy as like a harmony and discord is fine right now. You could lean a little bit more into it with like pulling the harmony and, and thing out of him, but I do think that just complicates a hero that doesn't need more complications. 
I actually think Zen is okay right now. Same, I agree. Hot take. I think with the change, the most recent change with Discord Orb, uh, being able to not to be reapplied every seven seconds actually did really well. It makes it less frustrating for tanks while making Zen still okay because the harmony is very forgiving. You're tankier at 225 HP, so you give him power in other, other parts. I've been playing a little bit of Zen. He feels okay right now, to be honest with you. The Transcendence is still a pretty good ultimate, even though I can't re-discord the same person over and over again. Um, the, the Harmony Orb has been the most pleasant change. Remember, it's five seconds now of losing line of sight of a person before you lose your Harmony. I don't actually have to reapply my Harmony pretty often because if I have it on a Tracer and she goes around the corner for a while, she keeps the thing for a while and then she eventually blinks back or recalls and it's still on them. I have strengths as a healer more with the Harmony and less of the annoyance, obnoxiousness of Discord Orb. And now it's 25% uh, instead of 30. I think Zen's okay right now. I don't think we need to do much to him. Hot take, Mauga's fire-based buff is a really cool elemental interaction that feels so cool. Um, the closest thing we have, we've seen to that is Symmetra's life plus ammo steal interaction with shields and shield health. I think having more of these elemental interactions could be a great way to add depth in cooperation to team comps. Maybe adding some ice interaction with Maze Beam and walls with future heroes or a character that interacts with poison from Widowmaker or Ana Shots, etc. Yeah, this is where we start entering into the realm of, uh, of Pokemon with, fi uh, with elements. I think having the interaction, complementary interactions with elements like uh, with Mauga's fire is really cool. But I don't think we want anything that has like strengths and weaknesses. Like obviously with Pokemon, water beats fire, fire beats ice. We don't want Mauga's fire based thing to do more damage to a Maywall. Unless you guys really think we can cook with that idea. I think that adds too much complexity in a first person shooter. Like, Pokemon's a turn-based strategy, you think about it. This one, I think the interaction within your own team is cool. So a little of, like, if I put some ice on the ground as May, like, I primary fire the ground, like, uh, interactions where, like, my team is sped up a little bit, or, like, another ice-based hero. If they specifically walk on it, they get a small movement speed buff. I think that's okay. It's, it's I don't want it to be, like, too niche, but as it stands, the fire-based thing is the first time they've done it. They're experimenting with it, and I think... It's okay so far. So for those who don't know, Mauga does critical damage as long as the person's on fire. Mauga can set them on fire himself, or right now, I believe it's Ash's Dynamite sets them on fire, and Torbjorn's Molten Core sets them on fire. Although Molten's Core has another niche thing where Molten Core's fire for Torbjorn does extra damage to armored targets. There's a lot of niche things and a lot to study in, like... Um, one thing I, I heard from a very casual Overwatch player is they don't play ranked because it feels like they need to study. There's actually too many things to learn and know. Um, but that being said, uh, yeah, it would make counterpicking really hard if like there's too much of these like one stronger than the other. But complementary is okay as long as it's very minor and it's just like a cool thing. For the most part, like Mauga can set a person on fire really fast anyways right now, so it doesn't feel that outrageous when you combo it with Ash or Torb to set them on fire for him. So like if we go with the ice or the idea that you mentioned with with poison, with Widowmaker, because Ana Shot is a little bit of poison, that's right. Well, what do we what do we do with poison? If they're poisoned, they take 10% more damage from other poison people. Like uh, you know. We can ideate off that, but one step at a time. We start with Mauga, maybe do ice next or something. Yeah. Not, not too hot of a take. I think it's okay. Okay. Hot take. After getting hit with a hard CC, uh, like sleeps or stuns, there should be a moment where any newly applied hard CC abilities are reduced or negated. That will prevent chaining together longer cool, uh, cooldowns together to completely shut someone down from playing the game and open it up for more counterplay. I play tank and regularly get slept and then hacked and then hindered and then hooked and then wake up in the spawn room. <laughs> um, it's definitely the tank role that seems to be the 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 biggest complaint from all the uh, the CC. They're the biggest target, biggest hitbox. There's one of them, and they are the the target for all CC. Instead of like the reduction, I don't think this take is that hot. You could actually just have a uh, CC tenacity, like in League. I know, um, like a, a CC resistance across the entire role as well. Rather than, uh, as I think trying to do the math, is if someone's applying the CC to them, I'm like, oh, am I stacking too many? I think it adds too many layers of thinking. Just like a, 
a wrap on the top on tanks. They just have all CCs reduced by 50%. Anti-nade, only 50% healing reduction. Sleeps right now are, what, four, five seconds? And then it's now 3.5 on a tank already, right? You can cut that in half to 2.5 or whatever it's at right now. Um, the hack is, is, is a little less. I think that'll be easier to math because like all the tanks are like that. Rather than the worrying about stacking, it's like they're all cut in half and that might like alleviate some of the issues for tank. But then this is where we start worrying if, if tanks are really resistant to the CC, do they end up being a little too strong? Then you might have to balance the game after that. But I think reducing CC frustration is actually an okay direction to please them a little bit. Cause like, I actually think there's a, there's a like reapplying consecutive CCs, like timing it, coordinating it, it can reward people for like doing it correctly. Cause like, it's actually pretty hard to get people to like consistently sync them up so they don't overlap too much. But at the same time, like I actually, if they, if they do it where like there's a little bit of a resistance each time, it might mess up some of the animations. Like they'll be sleeping, but then they got hacked at the same time. But because the, the other CC, like uh, another like stun or whatever has like a travel time with the hinder like their animation gets messed up because they're on the ground but then instead of like doing the wake up animation they have to do the animation where they get hit by something so then they just like on the ground then they like wake their, their body just flips up really quickly it can glitch out like that when you have uh too much too many things like that but i do think we can this is not too much of a hot take it's a decent take um there can be something to be done with tanks there Lucio is the worst character to have on your team in the metal ranks he does not provide much besides speed boost who um who which can't be used effectively due to team coordination poor team coordination he offloads all the healing onto another support who likely doesn't have the mechanical skill uh to keep everyone alive and worst of all lucio players get rewarded for this because no one can shoot him so he gets to skate around um and do nothing all game that combined with so many lucio one tricks or insta just makes me accept the loss at the character selection screen Believe it or not, like I know I mentioned, like don't they don't you don't want to read too many too much in the data, but like I don't know how often Lucio is in every game. I don't know what the unmirrored win rates are, but I think Lucio is closer to fifty percent than some of the other supports. Um, he does not provide much besides speed boost. I think speeding at the right time to engage and disengage is a lot harder at the lower ranks. That part is true. But having a Lucio beat a big defensive vault like that and the aura uh, of healing, if they do amp healing, the amp healing is actually pretty good at good times. And I will say simply skating around an existing makes space. If you are causing two people to look at you, if the Ash, instead of shooting your tank, is looking at you trying to shoot you off the wall, that's less damage the Ash is doing to the your 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 Mauga, which means less for the supports to have to heal them, if that makes sense. That's where a lot of value comes from. If you just are on the ground, Lucio, staying with your team, you are losing a lot of value. If you're skating around pretty pretty well, um, even if it doesn't feel like you're doing much with the speed, simply being a distraction goes a long way. You'd be, it's a very important lesson. I think I saw a flat sh TikTok or something or a short where he was uh, he was spectating a bronze and then there was like a Arissa that disconnected, but then like everybody just like looked at the Arissa and just kept shooting the Arissa and it didn't die. Like people, if they get fixated on something, they won't look at anything else. The awareness goes out the window. So if you're actually like decently wall climbing somewhere around, you can just make three people just stare at you for like the longest time. And that can generate value. It won't feel as good, but you know, I think you can uh, make it work. I really don't think Lucio is the worst character to have on your team in the metal ranks. But then again, I don't play in the metal ranks. I don't really know what other people's opinions are. This one is your hot take, of course. So it sounds pretty hot to me. I don't know what people feel like. Yours yours is Lucio, and then I, I guess I'll present the question to the comments or the chat here. If you're a metal rank player, so gold and under, I don't know if Plat's considered metal, what is the worst support to feel like you get in your ranks? So I feel like most people enjoy Moira and Mercy here because they get good baseline value. Next hot take, add sword heroes. I want to feel like a warrior. I don't care, melee heroes suck. No shield, no nothing, just swords. Make them go chop, chop. Not a hot take. I think uh, Overwatch is such a dynamic game where we're able to have so many different weapons. It's not like Valorant where everybody has to have literally a gun, right? We have Genji's blade, that's the closest thing. We have hammers with Brig and, and, and Rhine and Torb. We can add just a sword based hero, a dual sword maybe. A melee hero we can cook with this it is a first-person shooter but you know it's all good 
I'm okay with this take. Okay, last hot take of the video. Remember to leave your hot takes in the comments. Uh, Chuck says, we should have a Mario Kart-like map selection. I don't really like the idea of random maps, and I think if we all got to vote on a selection of like six maps, that would be better than the current. I'm 50-50 on this take. I mean, I haven't played much Mario Kart. You just kind of like pick, do you vote? I never played Mario Kart online. Usually if I play with my nieces or something, I'm just like, we're playing Rainbow Road. But I played Halo. That was like a, a veto system. You, it would auto select one map and you could veto once. I know Counter-Strike is like, you queue in for whatever map you want. I don't know, I kind of think, Oh, that's a good take actually from the from the Twitch chat here. Uh, CC's game room. It's a hot take because it'll split the player base and extend queue times. That's true. Queue times for good matchmaking is already long and this would make it way worse. And it's going to force people to only play maps that are popular because if they try to play maps that they personally enjoy and it's not popular, they'll never be able to find a game. You'll get some pretty bad, poor matchmaking. I mean, Halo was an old game and, and Halo 3 was the last time I played a veto system. And I think it's a little outdated. I think the map, like so there's gonna be game modes that some people don't like. It's not a pick a map before a queue, but pick a map when you have your match already. Oh, so like queue in people of the rating and then pick the map second. Like some maps are gonna shine more than others. And like as someone, what if you're someone who doesn't like one of the popular maps, then it's just gonna be annoying. I personally, I like the full randomness, but maybe one choice. I think Mario Kart is too, how much is Mario Kart? Six random maps? I think at most it could just choose two. I wouldn't even say choose the game mode. If the game goes, if you queue up the people and then it says you're playing push or hybrid, obviously we're going to play hybrid. I think it should just randomize two maps and then vote on two then. Then we can we can cook with that. Because I do think it, Overwatch is, is, is great because there's so much variance in the game modes. And you can define your skill as a player by being effective on all certain game modes. What if you're just really good at control but you suck ass on push? Well, get good. I mean, you can try your best to not vote for push if it ever rotates on you, but then there might be some people who vote for it and then you have to learn to adapt. So 72 tracks in Mario Kart, that is a lot. Overwatch has about like 30 something maps. I think um, two choices of two, once we keep adding more maps in the game, could could be uh, something to work with. So not the hottest take in the world. Mario Kart's a little extreme because they have too many maps here. Yeah, one, one at a time. Add one and then see how that goes. I like Flashpoint. Anyways, that's it for the hot takes this week. Make sure to leave yours in the comments. See you on Twitch stream. Bye-bye.